don't know about that too much. Okay. So how do you calculate the escape velocity? You just tell me, like, uh, how do you approach it? Uh, like, uh, you do v v e equals Yes, Aryan. Hello, sir. Can you hear me, right? Yes, yes, yes. Then please continue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, v e equals to square of gravitational constant and the mass of the planet. And then divided by the radius. Hello. Yeah, that is fine. Like, uh, okay, you are in which uh, grade? Fifth. Fifth. So in eleventh uh, standard, right? If you are following CBSE, then there is uh, a chapter on gravitation, and there uh, in your exams you will have to uh, calculate. You know, derive the formula for escape velocity. So in there, what they do is. They take the gravitational potential energy of Earth, of any planet to be uh, general, and then the gravitational uh, potential energy of a point far away in space. So when you subtract these two, according to laws of conservation of energy, so suppose see, you are sending an uh, uh, object from Earth to the outer space, you will be sp there will be change in its potential energy. That change in potential energy is brought out by the kinetic energy half mv square so basically you equate the change in uh, gravitation potential energy to kinetic energy that is half mv square and v stands for uh, uh, velocity right so if you do it and then you take the square root you will get v answer so that is there in class 11 gravitation that's a very interesting uh, uh, topic gravitation and it comes to around 11 point uh, two or four, I'm not sure, but around 11 kilometer per second escape velocity in Earth. If you plug in yes, the value, 11, 11, point 11 kilometers or six, 16 million horse, horsepower. Yeah, so uh, that is a very so. The what you do is so you get a generalized formula when you're deriving it, and then you just have to uh, plug in the values for mass of the Earth. G M E by uh, I'm not sure ah, radius of the earth. So if you plug in those, then you'll get a generalized. Uh, you'll yes. get the value for escape velocity on earth. Yes. Uh, and uh, how how do we calculate the gravitational constant? Calculation of gravitational constant th that also is there. So, um, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, there was this uh, what do you call dumbbell experiment that was carried out in uh, uh, the previous century for gra uh, cal uh, calculating the gravitational constant. Basically, a heavy mass object was placed, and then a uh, small deflection was absorbed when another heavy mass object was placed. I'm not sure about the details, but the measurements are very, uh, you know, precise because gravitational constant is a very small quantity. So I'm not uh, really sure about how it did, but I'm aware that there is there was an experiment by the dumbbell experiment. Uh, I'm not very sure. I have to look it up. There are other ways also. Uh, it's the only thing I'm aware of. Okay. Hello, Mr. I sent a message to Monly, sir. I think they will join. Actually, Mr. Tunja has some problem. Okay. You can't speak right now. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Tunja. Hello? Due to health ready? issue. Due to, hello? Due to health issue. Yes. Mr. Tunja can't. Oh, he's listening today. 
So, Madanji, right now you are also doing job, yes? Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm currently doing job as well. So, your Saturday, Sunday is a holiday? Yeah, Saturday and Sunday we have holiday. Uh, we take education done, yes? Yeah, I've completed my engineering and computer science in 2023. Okay. So, next plan is any. You want to also continue education or something? Yeah, I wanted to. Uh, I want to pursue masters in physics. So it's a bit of a challenge with uh, un uh, undergraduate experience in computer science and then uh, uh, trying to pursue masters in physics. So I'm just looking for options now. You 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 completed only B Tech, not BSc. Yes. Uh, no, I have completed only B B in computer science. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you have right now regarding physics only plus two. Yes, ten plus two. Yes, correct. I only know. I only studied up to twelve standard physics. Yes. So you you searching or something or no? How it's possible? Type MSc it's possible or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, looking for uh, things on that, like uh, should I bring, uh, build up my profile uh, for MSc or are there any other exams that I can write? Also, search in other other countries also. What's the option for regarding this? It's possible or no? Correct, sir. That is yeah. That is also something to be considered. Yeah. Every country education education system is different, different, right? Correct, correct. Totally. I thought to Rana Malik sir a statement he told me that this type is not possible. Yes, you needed to you need to first of all be a seen physics, right? Correct, yes. correct. And that's even possible. Correct, sir. Yes, you say more three years, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Second option is it's uh, like uh, you know, uh, Indira Gandhi National Open University. Yeah, yeah, BSc course, uh, distance learning. Yeah, that is one of the options. Yeah, so for this, you have no need to left any job, and after three years, you will hmm. complete BSc. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, like, uh, I don't want to compromise on uh, the education part, like, I don't want these. Uh, you know, distance learning. I I want to like go to labs, attend classrooms, and uh, yes. learn it from a proper right. uh, classroom experience. This is like a compensation. This uh, distance learning courses. Yes. Well, you can also find out uh, what the direct way after twelfth in a, any government department. Mm hmm. Hmm. Correct. Baba Research Center or uh, Tata. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in this type of uh, department, if selected, then it will also good. Correct. Yes. I am calling to Malik sir. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, Aryan, let's talk with Madanji. Yeah, and Aryan, like you are asking about that uh, measurement of universal gravitational constant, right? It was performed, uh, it was, uh, you know, measured by an in an experiment called uh, Cavendish experiment. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 
you can uh, google it uh, it basically the same thing as i told it involves like placing uh, two huge spears basically the dumbbell right that you see in gyms so they yes. place two yes. huge two huge spears next to each other and because these spears are huge right they will have some kind of a small measurable uh, gravitational force of attraction and the gravitational uh, force of attraction will produce a twist in a, a string that is connecting them and using that using torque and uh, other factors uh, you can calculate uh, the constant you can uh, search it up cavendish experiment so cavendish experiment you can search it up there are i think my youtube youtube videos demonstrating it in uh, real life like uh, they will place two spheres and uh, you can see how they measure it is called cavendish experiment Yes, Aryan, you are totally silent. Aryan. Yes, sir. Any question? Potential question regarding science. Yes, sir, I have. Yes, sir, I have. Yes, please. Hello? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Aryan. Yeah. Can you create a paradox yourself? Paradox? Uh, myself. Yes. <laughs> paradox myself. In a sense, you want me to create uh, some paradox that has not been uh, theorized before, is it? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Like, paradox... Uh, uh, not sure about that. When you talk about paradox, the only thing that comes to my mind is that uh, grandfather paradox that uh, that is used as an argument against time travel, right? So if you go back and then try to uh, kill your own grandfather uh, before he got married, then who went to kill your grandfather in the first place? That is the only thing that comes to my mind when you talk of paradox. Namaste, sir. But, uh, sir, please unmute, sir. Ah, sir, please unmute, sir. Ah, sure. Hello, everybody. Continue, Aryan. Yes. What are you saying? Uh, we were talking about paradoxes like uh, and loop oh okay yeah continue i'm listening uh hello hello madam uh, yeah yeah then please continue yeah uh uh when uh, I was preparing for my exams. I was uh, still doing some problems. Like I wanted to do something that I call, can call myself. Like uh, how you can calculate uh, temperature faster. Like uh, it would come in my exams and I have just uh, what you call make it easier for me 
like i just multiplied by 1.8 and then plus 32 oh that is for uh, celsius to fahrenheit the, is that what you are saying yes uh, okay so it, you are asking like how to calculate it faster yes uh, th that is the only way i know um, not really sure if there is uh, any other formula for that but i just created one okay go ahead what is it i just multiplied by 1.8 then just plus 32 <laughs> okay so <laughs> that's, that's not the much. same thing yeah that is not much different um actually like uh, if i'm not wrong i had uh, seen some uh, tricks to convert uh, celsius to fahrenheit so i'm just looking them up i'm not really sure i had seen it somewhere in a post or uh, something uh not sure so it says that multiply the temperature in uh, fahrenheit celsius by 2 and then add 30 that is what you ap approximate 1.8 to 2 and then add th 30 to get uh, because it's easier to multiply in your head right Suppose if you have MCQs and you don't need to exactly have the precise answer, you can multiply it by 2 and then add 30. You will get an estimated temperature. That is if you want to approximate. Maybe that is one trick that you can use. Instead of being precise, mm -hmm. just be uh, closer to the answer. Yes, Aryan, you are totally silent. Aryan. Yes, sir. Uh, you are totally silent. Sir, I had a question. Yes. Uh, how does a uh, phone know that we are touching somewhere? Like, uh, if you touch on uh, an icon named Google, it will open that. How, how does it know? Uh, touch screen right yes. so so basically uh when you're touching uh so uh, have you seen like when you uh touch a car sometimes it beeps then there's yes. a loud sound it works on the more or less the same concept i'm not much sure about it so from what i know is when you touch a part of a screen right so that uh, the circuit gets completed due to your touch and then the electric current runs through the uh, processor to let it know that there is a touch at this point and the operation has to be performed. Basically the change in electric field due to your touch. Oh. That is what causes the same thing applies in car that completes the circuit uh, when you touch it. So I think that is the case. Okay. Uh, I think that is the same case when you type on your computer or so basically it is the communication happening once you press your buttons uh, internally from one system to another system and then uh, ultimately uh, uh, it goes to machine language uh, which is the real uh, real uh, uh, place where action actually happens and as you know machine language is the uh, is where when you give the instruction it uh, accept it only in zero and one and but there is so many combination of zero and one uh, in program and then it understands the signal it uh, uh, it comprehends it and then it uh, uh, gives you response uh, back accordingly. So when you touch, say for example, A, it knows what you are trying to do, and then it gives you response back on the screen as A. Same thing with uh, touching the touch phone or anything else. Okay. <laughs> So nowadays, yeah. I see that every, 
uh, I see Pankaj has joined. Uh, oh, sorry, Prem has also joined. Oh. Hello, Prem. Yes, so, uh, how much do you? Hello, sir. How much? Uh, how much you are familiar, Aryan, with the artificial intelligence? That is something new happening, and it is uh, transforming the world. Just like uh, invention of computer has transformed the world. Now they are saying that this artificial intelligence is the next thing, which is completely going to change our society. So I guess uh, by the time you become adult, you will experience a different world. It will be more, uh, what you call, even we are mechanized right now, but it will be, uh, they are saying that um, uh, you, can, you can imagine uh, many, many multiple of mechanization what we have today by the time you become adult. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we see the value of that one. Yesterday, I tell you one example. Yesterday, uh, in uh, you, you have so many companies, right? Uh, in um, everywhere, like India, you have Tata, you have... Um, uh, just for example, uh, Tata, you have uh, what is Ambani's, many, many companies. Similarly, there are many, many companies here in America. And um, uh, most of the computer related companies are in California. And not only in California, just like uh, you have a place like Bombay and Pune focused uh, in Maharashtra, you can call it in India, more in the uh, economy, f economic field. Similarly, there is a uh, San Francisco area, San Jose area called Silicon Valley. That is where most of the innovation has happened in the last 50 years. Uh, 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 50 years, uh, it, is, it, is a, it is a great place for the scientist and uh, uh, all kind of uh, 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 development is happening in that area and that's why you have all the modern companies you can think of their headquarter is there for example google Mac uh, google uh, not microsoft um, facebook um, amd nvidia there these are all the top companies uh, right now in the technological field who are enabling artificial intelligence and um, uh, the point I was trying to make is that yesterday, yesterday uh, I was watching the market, stock market, and Facebook company, which started just 20 years back, it is the 20th anniversary of that, that company almost, and uh, I remember it very well, it was a $20 stock that time, and um, yesterday, the stock value jumped in one day 20%. 20% in one day jump in that stock value. You can imagine how many, I mean, you know, they have all over the world. And the reason was they have started using artificial intelligence in all their uh, uh, areas. Uh, I mean, wherever they are, they, mostly they are in the social platforms like Facebook, WhatsApps, which we are using right now, most of us are using, that's driven by them. And uh, like that, there are many, many platforms they own. And uh, the reason why they jumped is because uh, they have started using a lot of uh, this uh, AI thing. And what happens, what does AI do? AI basically is, it's uh, like, uh, you can call it a super engineer. So, it does the work of uh, all of us together, uh, that machine, uh, by itself. No need to ask. Uh, it will uh, uh, it will understand all the questions and it can answer it. So it's basically the uh, very complex machine you can call it, or very complex computer you can call it. And now it is solving the problem instead of human being like you and me. And since you know. Human are the most expensive uh, in the sense that we have to eat, we have to uh, do things, and we need money. Machine don't need that. And so once you develop something, it's there 
and with very bare minimum you can maintain it so imagine a robot who is just going to do the work like you of course there will be initial cost in making that robot but after that that robot wouldn't ask for a salary every month and that is exactly what the artificial intelligence is doing and it is overall reducing the cost of doing all the activities business and um, and that's why that stock jumped so that is a new thing artificial in intelligence in this uh, century now uh, i think by the end of this century probably something else will come but but next uh, they are saying that next 30 40 years that is what is going to uh, kind of drive the economy social activities and transform the society i mean um, it will not be like this for example i can give you another example uh, how it has society has changed when i came to america i used to write letters to my family and everybody i'm sure your parents and other people did that but now none of us use any more letters all we do is pick up a telephone and we talk to each other and so that part of activity has completely disappeared that uh, writing letters to each other so that has changed why this happened because of the computerization of the society mechanization of the society and so that process is continuing and now gradually it is going higher and higher and uh, it was kind of flat for a while but now suddenly this artificial intelligence has come in picture now and uh, it is going to transform back to you guys thank you sir bangal sir when will malik sir join yes i sent a message but you know not any reply you know after a few minutes he joined because always he sir joined so aryan you have any question please share you want to say something sir will join no problem yes aryan prem you have any question after long time you talk with someone else yes 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 is really glad to join this meeting and uh, really thankful to amanath sir again to making this uh, uh, glamorous session so really uh, right now artificial intelligence is like a robo right sir so so maybe robo having some kind of uh, fuel and uh, something uh in their part maybe so they can work like a battery or maybe some electronical you know things right in will there then only they can work right sir yes and already needed it's i like machine okay yeah it's I like, like machine you need petrol diesel Electric oh no 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 no! It 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 is it is it is not a robot machine. No no no! It's not like that. It is basically <laughs> it is just a software you can call it advanced software. Okay, just like uh, is uh, and uh, and the robot is also what robo robo machine is that uh, any robot you can think of that's also advanced machine. So but only difference is that now you are making it. way more advanced than the robot like for example it's very common right now that uh, 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 i don't know about in india but here everybody in the house uh, in america we have carpet and uh, carpet cleaner everybody has uh, uh, pretty much the uh, tiny robot which does the cleaning of the carpet carpet every day so that tiny machine it goes you know all the corners we cannot reach you don't have to worry about it you just uh, it is just like vacuum cleaner you know and it does to every corner goes find it and clean it um, whatever it is so like that uh, our, uh, uh, 
this artificial intelligence it will be not only one directional you program it in uh, to to the problems let's say for example let's program it to your your banking system so right now let's say that you as a operation you have hundreds of questions you have 20 you are responsible for 500 different clients uh, and you are responding their questions by email by talk by conversation by you know interacting with them imagine if a uh, instead of you instead of uh, prem there is artificial artificial intelligence prem in fact they can make exactly a person like you uh, and they can copy your voice and so um, it will be suppose if the, nobody knows then it will be like Prem Jha is talking there to all the clients. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Good. Yeah. So, uh, because sir, right to... now, right now, I also, I also feel same thing because right now I transfer my department uh, from RM to operation team. So uh -huh. there is various kind of entry. Maybe customer is claiming to reverse that amount to me just because of service yes. or whatever reason. Yeah. Right. So I am in yeah, I am so, in making making trace so various reversal uh, requests yeah. is coming to me first I need so, to scrutinize then yeah. send to so, send to checker then checker will upload that uh, that uh, entry to robot tray then robot tray will decide entry yeah. is repeatedly happened earlier or not <laughs> yeah. if not then we can so, never <laughs> exactly so this is what is happening you know different companies are at different level of mechanization Indian companies are a little behind. Uh, but American companies uh, behind the scene, um, almost uh, all companies have started using wherever they can, like all the mundane tasks which you and I do uh, every day. Many of them in the companies, I mean, uh, gradually they are transferring and then gradually they are uh, doing the calculation, like complex uh, mathematical calculation, which you and I cannot do it, uh, they can do it. Remember that even long back, the, when the computer was built by IBM, uh, uh, people were asked to play chess with the computer and nobody was able to win with uh, chess with uh, IBM computers <laughs> because, you know, uh, <laughs> it can think like a person and it can retain and it can um, uh, uh, instant, instantaneously figure out what is the best answer. And human, you know, we lose it, right? We cannot retain all that information uh, for a very long time. So as soon as we a little bit um, lose, uh, our next answer is not correct. And then here we go, you lose the game. So so, so this is happening here. Now, uh, every company is uh, are, uh, and then uh, another question has come with it. Oh my gosh, if the, if the um, uh, artificial intelligence is going to take all the jobs from the people, then what people are, people are going to do? Especially one plus billion people in India. Imagine there, if we get the artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. It's double yeah. Bharat. Double India. <laughs> No, even though yeah. even though a senior management or maybe upper senior uh, top level management will uh, approach lower middle uh, management or lower middle people who are working in the actual ground ground uh, reality so yeah. he would just uh, approach us to give me some kind of idea right so we can exactly. just just try in uh, set in robot tray <laughs> so exactly. this kind of thing yeah. and give me just clear, uh, you know, uh, clarification why this idea is correct. So yeah. what could be the combination and permutation to reverse or maybe to set up in that robo, you know, mindset. Exactly. So there is various th things going on. Yeah. So basically, it is nothing but a decision making science. I mean, I think uh, they have started, I don't know what they call it, uh, maybe they will name a name. So in all these mechanization, uh, basically there is uh, the only thing you make is different decision. For example, you know, uh, let's say, and then they transfer into machine uh, systems, complex systems. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, zero is no. 
uh, one is yes. I don't know how you code the word if you don't want to say yes or no. Maybe there would be another <laughs> code for that. You know, <laughs> gas or question mark or exclamation mark, something like that. So, so basically, all the all the everything is uh, decision making, uh, but. Uh, decision making in the old computer by the old computers have been uh, basically now flat we already know we have been using it for last 20 years that one right so just like everything else if you want to move ahead you have to come up with a new technology and um, and then that's what you have to that's how the artificial intelligence is basically the, uh, we have been in the productivity wise uh, uh flat whatever the computer could bring the productivity has been flat right right now so now they were look scientists are looking for the, another opportunity how can you even we improve further that's what they always do and this is what is the artificial intelligence um so right now the machine intelligence is being replaced by another thing which is more complex machine and that's what they are calling it artificial intelligence and every company is using it. I mean, uh, right now, uh, you would be surprised that uh, um, it is uh, it is being heavily used, at least in the United States. Yes, sir. I also listened one time in R7 node, and then I'm going to say it's like a double role. One mm -hmm. is doing it like AI in the newsroom. And then it's original, and then I'm going to live from, yes. from the other side. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And now, the sound is same. I, Both activities are the same. Okay. I mean, you what you are talking is exactly TV on, on CNBC <laughs> News one day. So one of the neat anchor, he was, talk, his, he was giving introduction of artificial intelligence. And so basically what happened is that uh, their uh, group or their scientist has made a jacked person like him by artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically he was talking to mirror image in the same voice. He would ask a question and his mirror image artificial 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 intelligence guy would answer his the world has now changed and madan ji you are doing job in i, I like uh, engineering or something uh, i am uh, my job sector is uh, regarding semiconductors oh that's uh, looks like then you and i are in the same field i'm not any more working where do you work which company you work for uh, I work in Synopsis. Oh, all right. Uh, I am a veteran of uh, several companies in 40 years here. Started with IBM, then uh, Intel, then supplier side, LAM Research, uh, Global Foundries, and a couple of others. So, yeah, I just uh, took retirement a couple of years back after 40 years of work. Oh, it's great to hear, sir. So, Madanji, you have any question, any, any doubt regarding this? Uh, well, I, I mean, you know, we can share whatever I know, but I can, <laughs> cannot say that I'm going to <laughs> clear his doubts. <laughs> there. So, no, I don't have any questions right now, but. Uh, yeah, it is interesting to know that uh, uh, you have worked in so many companies. So you definitely must be very uh, knowledgeable in uh, the industry, if I'm not wrong. So uh, yes, uh, I have. Uh, I have. When I was working, I have several patents. I have several publications. I used to go to conferences. I was in. I was uh, in the research and development of the cutting edge technology. Like um, in semiconductor, you go by nodes like um, uh, gate length, oxide gate length is what is that? And that is called node. 
so i started uh, you know when i started in the 80s it was in uh, uh, microns and now it is in nanometers and um, i worked up to 14 nanometers in production at intel and then um, uh, I, when i intel i came back to ibm i was part of developing the 14 and then when i went to global foundry to do 70 uh, 7 nanometer it's keep cutting the oxide length uh, that is when we couldn't do it uh, so that's where i really stopped working in a, in a way uh, but right now the technology wise um, uh, nvidia and amd they already have designed chips up to 2 nanometers of the oxide length node and tsmc in uh, um, in uh, what is that taiwan is manufacturing that uh, here in america uh, cutting edge manufacturing companies is intel and it uh, successfully did up to 14 nanometer uh, design development manufacturing but after that it couldn't do any further so basically right now uh, manufacturing wise united states is behind taiwan in semiconductor manufacturing so so you can see that how technology happens uh, you know once somebody is a leader i mean you know once position changes i remember when i was uh, in uh, ibm in uh, 90s somehow since it is a very expensive uh, system of manufacturing uh, everything happens in high class clean room very expensive even all machines have to be clean room compatible and um, everybody has to be clean room compatible everybody is like a operator is also a scientist uh, inside that one because everything is multi million dollar machine to you don't need a operator coming from my village or your village so it has to be engineer only so we all all the workers there are engineers so everybody is uh, scientists from different dis discipline and uh, we were at the cutting edge technology at ibm at that point in 90s and uh, i was working in, in a consortium uh, where people from the top other companies had joined to learn from ibm for example uh, consortium was uh, uh, who were there? Um, it was uh, Toshiba from Japan, Siemens from Germany, uh, uh, and Toshiba, Siemens, and um, and um, uh, what was the Korean company? Samsung. So basically, it was the one, two, three, four companies were, this is just, I'm giving you the idea how things work in American industry. So basically it was a uh, uh, four companies, uh, engineers working together. So I had my German partners, Japanese partners and Korean partners and American partners and American partners mean one third white American, one third Indian and one third Chinese because American society, the engineering society is pretty much uh, uh, divided. You can call it in four ways. One quarter is white guys, one quarter is Indian, one quarter is Chinese, and one quarter is the rest of us, the rest of the world from coming scientists coming from the different part. So it is highly dominated by Indian in the research and development everywhere you go in any company, in any field, doesn't matter uh, what it is. So ho hopefully one day, Aryan will be one of them uh, if he decides if, if he continues to love the cutting edge technology probably he will have to come to America unless India becomes just like Taiwan uh, the top notch <laughs> company in in the in his field so the point I was trying to make is that in 90s all those companies were working uh, uh, so all of us were developing the uh, technologies like uh, that time uh, uh, we were developing 60, 64 meg DRAM and 256 meg DRAM, which is now very, very old, you can call it. But the idea was that you develop the product together 
and then all these four companies can go back and produce that technology in their factories so that is exactly what happened siemens went to do it in uh, uh, germany um, uh, toshiba went to do it in japan uh, uh, and of course samsung uh, in korea and after that point uh, they also made a kind of joint factory here uh, in, um, uh, in america somewhere else not in uh, new york where where this was happening it was upstate new york and then after that since ibm was up to this point in the whole world ibm was on the top of the semiconductor development so luckily i worked for a while uh, one of the top technology happening in the world uh, i gave you the example and then after that ibm decided that no it is a very expensive business and very little profit you know how ibm is and they said that no we are not going to do any more semiconductor and they they left the field and once they left the field then uh, there is no other american companies who could continue in the semiconductor and basically then uh, intel for a while took the leadership but uh, uh, um, uh, uh, they also couldn't sustain it. So now, basically, America has lost the leadership in a, in a way in semiconductor development. Yes, sir. Nothing yes, stays sir. on top. Yes. If, yeah. So four, four companies, yeah. research, development, combined doing combined. something. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Imagine yes, all the four. Uh, I remember my Japanese counterpart, because Japan, they cannot afford the houses. The houses here are big, big, you know. I mean, in New York, where I was working, there were areas, you can have a house in five acre lots. You can have a house in two acre lots. You can have a house in one acre lots. You can have a house in half acre lots. So they were shocked to see the houses and plots. <laughs> because imagine five acre land is a lot in Japan, but in America, we have plenty of land, so I mean uh, uh, they they uh, they can they can do like that kind of thing, and uh, so they were thinking that probably they are in heaven. Uh, um, that uh, the lifestyle of America they couldn't imagine in Japan, so they were here for three four years and they were very happy that they got the deputation. So. So imagine when that time the computer was, uh, I think, uh, let's say laptop has, uh, at, uh, has come, uh, although uh, for the business it isn't at that time, uh, um, IBM was the first to develop the uh, ThinkPad, uh, but they didn't want to sell it. Uh, to the uh, to the market like right now you have laptop T telling you now the politics of the companies and politics of the profit <laughs> so sometimes even if you develop a product you don't sell to the public and the reason was that uh, they uh, of course they were the only maker of very high advanced computers so they are uh, they were making the large computers which was used by government banks and all those uh, high uh, high level of companies who have huge database or systems they need uh, and that computer uh, uh, was making a lot of profit for them and they didn't want this laptop to compete with them so you can say how how the laptop would compete compete with them because then people will start using it uh, uh, directly the laptop rather the independent machine laptop think of it as independent machine rather than all the terminals which are connected with a big uh, uh, high frame computer somewhere in uh, one place and it is just like imagine like a, a big computer like a powerhouse and electric bulb in your houses so the old old IBM enterprise system was like that there was big computer somewhere uh, and then little terminal was everywhere in all the offices of the companies, any bank or anything, whatever we want to do. And uh, that was more profitable than making independent bulbs machines. So they didn't want to sell. So they kept it for a while for uh, inside. 
but um, uh, but they were ready for it. Uh, but then when the profit and loss, they imagined that, uh, hey, learning from IBM, all these Samsung and, and uh, Toshiba, they started making laptops, then they couldn't stop it. <laughs> so this is what happens. Cat was out. Yes. Cat was out because even all the computers you have, ultimately it is the chips. That's the only thing they have, which is a kind of high thing. But once the other people learned about it, how to do it, they started making. Then they said, oh my gosh, I cannot hide it anymore. So then they started selling the computer and they just flooded the market with their computer for a while. But of course, then gradually uh, they got out of that business. And unfortunately, uh, when, you know, they, they, they thought that they are making a very good decision, but that was the decline of the IBM. After 90s, IBM has not yet recovered, almost like it is uh, 25, 30 years. Uh, stock is stagnant. Uh, Technology-wise, they haven't come uh, any, with anything new now. And um, all the discoveries in the science are happening by other companies, like, for example, you know, uh, in the... Uh, uh, so IBM is a New York-based company. So basically, when I was working uh, upstate New York City, it was two hours from New York City. In that area, there were multiple towns. They all were pretty much IBM towns. Every, uh, every place would have a little a small place, factories or technology going on. And the whole area is pretty much uh, IBM. And we used to joke, like uh, that time uh, where I was living in fiscal, so you go to work, you meet Indians. You go to temple, you meet Indians. You go to party, you meet Indians. Go, you go to shopping, you meet Indians. <laughs> so, uh, because of uh, there were so many Indian engineers in that area, uh, pretty much. Yeah. So enough of it. Let's go back to Aryan. Aryan, uh, what else you have in mind? Of course, Malikji didn't come today. He is not here to answer your astrophysics questions, yes. and I cannot. In, I can uh, just. Is waiting for Malik, sir. Yes, Aryan. Uh? <laughs> Aryan is still now waiting for Malik, sir. <laughs> I think I now if it, it now. I, if he didn't come so far, probably maybe he is very busy somewhere. Yes, I, I called him, but I am going to sleep right now. Can't pick my call. Okay, so you have no any question right now, Aryan? Yes, sir. Okay. So I sent a message also, Malik sir, but I think Malik sir is busy. That's the reason they can't receive my call. I think you know any answer or message. So Aryan, you have any idea regarding artificial intelligence? Do you know? Aryan? Uh, yeah. Uh, Aryan should think about Aryan? how the... It's... How... Aryan, you should think about how, because you will have to use artificial intelligence in your research for the astrophysics. So you have to start thinking about it, how you are going yeah. to use. I think uh, by the time you become adult scientist, uh, you will be in your prime and artificial intelligence will be in your prime. So you start, unless you use the artificial intelligence as your machine, uh, uh, you will not be able to solve the big problem. So you have to kind of simultaneously uh, learn uh, that as a tool to solve your astrophysics problems. Okay. It is just like, you know, like for a while, mathematics was the tool for the solving problem.
We have discovered only so far few laws of nature, right? So we have unlocked uh, only uh, few scientific uh, uh, things which uh, govern this whole cosmos. And we have long way to go. So we need scientists like you, Aryan, and then we also need machines like artificial intelligence or even in newer machines. Maybe who knows, you will come up uh, you will think that, oh, there is a limitation, just like I was giving you. Now, after, after a while, when you guys will think that, oh, artificial intelligence is not able to go any further, not able to solve any uh, problem, you guys will come and... Uh, uh you know discover a new science and new mathematics or or new way of doing things there will be another revolution but now for now artificial intelligence is a new revolution happening in the world at least it is happening in america right now and gradually it's a kind of going in different part of the world Right, so. So, Prem, right now you are traveling or now you, you reached at home? Prem? Hello? So, Madanji, where are you working? Which place? Uh, I'm currently working in Bangalore, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, Bangalore has almost every company's, uh, <laughs> uh, right? Correct, India correct. Has footprints. Bangalore has footprint of all the companies, all international companies. So that's a good thing. Yes, sir. I think regarding IT department after Bang means in India, Bangalore and Pune. Both are yeah. famous. Yes. Yeah, because because um, uh, uh, I mean it's uh, it's it's very cheap uh, because uh, a average engineer here costs you eighty thousand dollars minimum a year, and <clears throat> so eighty thousand dollars is how much? Eighty thousand times eighty. Let's call it. Aryan, do the mathematics for us. <laughs> <laughs> 80,000 times 80. How much is that in rupees? 8 times 80 is 64. So 64 times 10 to the power what? How much will be that? Suppose in a... Four. 10 to the power 4, right? 80, 1, 0, that's how I do calculation. 80 times I said that 80,000. So 80,000 has four zeros and then uh, one zero from that, so five. So six, uh, six, 64, 64 uh, and then times 10 to the power 5, right? So what will be in lakh crore? That's what I cannot figure out. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, now you got the picture. So that is the salary of an engineer here, average engineer. When you start a, when you are a young engineer, you finish your master's or PhD, uh, probably, uh, I think bachelor's is a little less, but I'm giving you idea of master's and PhD because that's what Indians do. They come to this country uh, and then they do master's. Uh, and our PhD, and then they join the workforce. So they begin normally with uh, 80, 90,000 salary nowadays. Of course, it has been different. In my case, 40 years back when I started, it used to be 40,000 <laughs> when I started at IBM. <laughs> uh, and now it is like um, uh, double of that in, uh, in uh, so 
and india india what is the average uh, like uh, starting salary generally what do you give there in india anybody has any idea madan what is the salary average salary for a say, uh, like uh, two years experience is that reasonable yes yes maybe 10 lakh yes sir Okay. So if you do the ten, uh, okay. So ten lakhs is so ten lakhs. Uh, if you well, let's convert that ten lakhs. It's easy to convert that into so ten lakhs divided by uh, eighty will be how much? Uh, let's call it eight lakhs just for a simple calculation. Eight lakhs divided by eighty is how much? It's a ten thousand. Ah, huh? ten thousand. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so, so for the same work, if you are in United States, you get eighty thousand, and if you are in uh, India, you get how much? You said ten thousand. Yes, sir. Okay. So here is the difference. So see that. Now that raises another question: Why is so different? So. that is a topic for of economics for some other day <laughs> you, <laughs> you need to get a economist to answer that question uh but uh think about it because so, expenses the, expenses are also also same yes sir income uh? is increasing income is increased so expenses are also increasing na sir well Compared but uh, india I mean, usa i mean income uh, if you look at the uh, real things we all have just like apartment houses just like you guys have there we all have car just like you guys have car we all have now in india you also guys have air conditioning so that's what we have yes. and then we we drive on the road just it like you guys washing machine everything everything is <laughs> everything <else. laughs> so, so now the whatever is the middle class of india pretty much they have everything uh here so so uh, within the house is the same uh, the difference is that uh, uh somewhere else right so that is what is causing cost like same house same apartment uh is uh, here uh, it is uh, you know if you go to take the two three bedroom three bedroom two bath uh, apartment right now i i'm in the princeton area here Uh, i can tell you that uh, we are in the process of since we moved here so in in united states good thing is that you buy and sell the houses just like you buy and sell houses in the village in india so it's no tension people move a lot as soon as they move within a week two they will go and check uh, 10 15 houses they will buy one and then they will sell the old one so that's how it happened that's how it keeps happening people people have are mobile they are not stuck in one town or in one place you know wherever jobs or family goes they go and um, so uh, but uh, native native so so no one having any native place there is no native place in america <laughs> 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 there there is no bihari and uh, punjabi and marathi thing in this country because nobody has a permanent place of course there are certain people lower level income and all that but as a professional they just move around let's say for example uh, i give you how many states i have moved so i came first to uh, north carolina to do my masters then my first job was as a college professor for so i went to another state called alabama as soon as i finished my masters i used to teach uh, physics basic physics which you get in college like core physics 1 physics 2 part of that and uh, mathematics and uh, up to differential equation and then pre engineering that was out of that uh, combination i had to teach something so i did it for one year in alabama alabama by the way is very famous for car racing uh, so from north carolina i moved to uh, alabama from alabama uh they were supposed to work on my green card 
and uh, because my goal was to get the green card fast when you come to this country so that i can work really in industry so uh, when i asked for them they were trying to delay but their idea was that if uh, uh, i wanted green card as soon as possible and they wanted to delay as long as they can because then you know every time if, as soon as i get my green card they knew it very well this was the cycle that i will leave then they will have to hire another person so the cycle goes on you know they kept hiring people and as soon as the uh, international guy comes and get green card they are out they just uh, leave so i saw them that they are trying to play the game so after a year i left that college i went to another college in south carolina doing the same thing uh it was very close to clemson university uh and uh, there i was for two years and then in that two years there i finally uh, got the green card nowadays it takes 20 years to get green card but in those days in 80s uh two years was the time so everything happened and that's another process i'll discuss some other time so so here you go so as soon as i got my green card boom and uh, now I can work in industry. So I picked uh, IBM to go one point morning. It's, it's very interesting. Uh, I had, I was supposed to go from university where I was working. They were paying for me. I didn't have PhD. They wanted me to do PhD. So they said that why don't you just go and uh, do your PhD? So interestingly, I said, fine. While I was applying for the job in industry in that summer of 88, I'm telling you. Um, um, so I, I, was apply, I was applying for jobs in industry and I had uh, my admission for PhD in South Carolina University of uh, South Carolina State University. So, so I lined up that one. And so if suppose if I had, uh, my life would have been different than what, <laughs> what my history I have, but so basically I was supposed to go to the college, uh, I mean, to do start my PhD in August. Um, and um, I was being paid by university where I was working. And on top of that, I had the fellowship from United College Negro Fund. That was a black college uh, since I was a professor of a black college. So they were giving me that scholar uh, fellowship to income source. And third was when you do the um, master PhD in the university, normally you get paid by the university also for doing research. So, so even that I could have made money equally like 40,000, which I made uh, with IBM salary. So, you know, imagine me now I had a two different paths to choose in the summer of 88. I mean, summer of, um, yeah, 88. Should I go to academics, which I was already part of? and continue to do my PhD and then, then and change the college, become a tenure track professor and do blah, 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 or go to work for industry. So I was sweating in a way, which way to go. But finally I picked up the, no, no, no. I already have tested the academics, what it is. I, you know, you keep publishing papers and do this, that research. Ah, I want to, uh, my engineer kicked in and say that, no, I want to experience a real engineering world and that's how i decided to go to so i came to new york from new york i worked almost like uh, 10 years then from new york i left i went to arizona to a supplier company called lamb research and then in arizona again after a few years i changed the job right there to intel and from so i was there for a very long time in uh, arizona for 15 years then my son become adult and uh, he also become engineer and he started working in this area here in New Jersey. So I said, oh my gosh, and he's the only kid we have. So I knocked the door again of my old company, IBM, which was New Jersey is very close to New York, uh, only two hours. So this is, uh, I told them that I would like to come back and, and my still old friends were there. They said that welcome back. So I went back to IBM where I used to work like, 20 years back so back to new york from new from there i went to where else i went to yeah so i worked a couple of companies like from ibm to global foundries and then uh, i left that to come to pennsylvania uh, uh, because it was still closer to my son's place uh, 
and then from there i moved to new jersey where my son is working so 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 you, so you can see that how so it is just my story it is exactly the same story of uh, professionals generally people move around so that's why there is no state affinity you i mean when we say uh, when it when it comes to filling the taxes you do like um, in state out of state and multiple state taxes so if suppose in a year you have worked uh, you know you have been leaking in a state full year then uh, you will do the tax state tax uh, for full year for that state uh, there is a multi state like suppose maybe you work 6 months in new york and 6 months in new jersey then you will do the taxes of the two states uh, federal tax will be the same but state tax you will have to do for two states and um, uh, and similarly suppose you are working for new york but uh, you are working uh, remotely and living in arizona then you are not, uh, you will have to different level of tax so this is how it goes here so nobody generally lives in any place for a very long time so that there is no concept uh, uh, maybe i would say that 30 40 percent population is still are like native just like we have marathi gujarati and all that thing but another 50 40 50 percent probably the upper bracket income they are very mobile society so it's really, it's really great experience yes sir it's yeah. good to know about american different states advantage uh, also yes different oh, yeah. different uh, I mean, uh, natural also new york is history is, also new york is i am the lucky enough that new york is the coldest state so i have worked there for like i said for 10 12 years 12 years i would say and then arizona is the hottest state <laughs> worse than rajasthan <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, <laughs> worse than rajasthan so i have like worked there also for 15 years so i have tested both cold but <laughs> one thing that canada is even colder than um, new york new york is the northern states uh, new york uh, there are many northern states which are cold like um, uh, uh, but yeah uh, that's why uh, so so right now uh, that's what it is so uh, i just uh, encourage and uh, Aryan just for your inform information uh, since um, here a lot of research happens in university that's why university get funded by the private companies as well as by the it's not simply like uh, teaching in the classroom on the blackboard no, this doesn't happen in American universities. Hands-on experience. When you come to do the research as a research PhD student, you do something different, um, come up with a new thing, and then you know you publish a few paper, three, four papers, and then that's how you get your PhD. And uh, <clears throat> if you, if you do decide to do that, and then if you look at the ranking of the, you should sometimes look at the ranking of the international universities you will find that American universities, many, many are on the top 50, you know, uh, there is no match to uh, Americans in the higher education. So uh, it's amazing that only in very short period, America has advanced so much. I guess now uh, it's late, so we should leave now, right?